Lately, something seemed off with my mom, who lives alone. The first thought that crossed my mind was Alzheimer's. I suggested to my husband and mother-in-law that my mom move in with us. But they didn't agree. Worse, my husband said, If you push this, we're getting a divorce. Fine, I get it. I snapped. If you want me to leave, I will, but you'll regret it. My name is Atoria, and I'm 35 years old. I work from home as an illustrator and currently live with my husband Powell and my mother-in-law. A few years ago, after the passing of my father-in-law, we decided to have her move in with us. I was concerned about her well-being, so I agreed to the arrangement. We had just built a new house, so space wasn't an issue, and we easily prepared a room for her. However, Powell doesn't earn much, and we couldn't afford the house on our own, so my mom helped us financially. My mother-in-law seemed thrilled about the decision, especially since Powell is her only son. After losing her husband, she began to smile more and seemed to regain her spirit within a few months. But that peace didn't last long. About six months into our living arrangement, she started picking on me. One morning, after eating the breakfast I had prepared, she sighed heavily. Ah, uh, this tastes terrible. Atoria, why do you keep serving me such salty food? What's your intention? I'm sorry, I tasted it before serving, I replied, trying to stay calm. I don't want to hear excuses. Are you trying to send me to an early grave with all this salt? No, I didn't mean to. And another thing, she interrupted, Why are you always hiding in your room? You should be doing the housework. But I'm working right now, I protested. Work? Sitting at your computer and drawing isn't work. How is that a job? This is my job. Yes, I draw but it's not just for fun, I explained, feeling frustrated. Don't talk back to me. If you do, I'll tell Powell you're neglecting your duties. That's not true, but that was just the beginning. She even started asking me for money. Just $500, Atoria, she would say. I, I can't afford that right now. Stingy, aren't you? Aren't you earning money with your computer? She sneered. It was so cheeky of her to mention my earnings only when she wanted money. In the end, I gave in and handed her the cash. This went on for a while, and as my work suffered, my frustration grew. I couldn't take it anymore and decided to talk to Powell. Hey, Powell, can we talk? I asked hesitantly. What? I just got back from work, and I'm tired, he replied, clearly annoyed. I'm sorry, but can we do something about your mom? She interrupts my work daily, complains about the chores, and even asks for money. I can't get any work done and it's really stressing me out. He looked at me with annoyance and responded sarcastically, You know, you don't have to consult me about every little thing. What? I was taken aback. When mom acts like that, it means you're not doing your job as a wife right. It's your fault. Besides, she's a housewife. Why can't you just give her some spending money willingly? Wait a minute. I do all the housework, and why should I be the one giving her money? because if you were doing the housework properly, she wouldn't be upset. Understand that. Think of the money as a token of gratitude, a fee for her guidance on your poor housekeeping. That's not. I started to protest, but his words left me dizzy. Instead of support, he blamed me. He continued looking down at me. Listen, you're the wife here. You married into my family, so just listen and do as you're told. Be quiet. Mom has been a housewife longer than you. She knows more. Her word is law. Got it? But, from now on, if you upset mom, I won't forgive you. Just do your job as a wife perfectly. Understand? With a face like a gargoyle, he stormed out of the room. Tears streamed down my face. Why is it always me? Why am I the one being blamed? We started living together thinking it was a good thing. But I never expected it to turn out like this. I deeply regretted agreeing to live with them. One day, I felt the need to hear my mom's voice, so I called her. Mom, it's me, Atoria. Oh, Atoria, it's been so long since you last called. What have you been up to? Mom, it's only been two days since we last spoke. What are you talking about? You haven't contacted me in two months, she insisted. A cold feeling crept over me. Our conversation wasn't making sense. The word Alzheimer's crossed my mind. Worried, I took my mom to the hospital the next day, and my fears were confirmed. She was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Though it was mild, the doctor said it would be difficult for her to live alone. She's already well into her 70s. I couldn't believe that my energetic mom had Alzheimer's. 
That night, I told my husband and mother-in-law about the diagnosis. Powell, mother, I need to talk to you about something. They both looked annoyed. What is it? It's probably nothing important, Powell muttered. Is it even relevant to us? My mother-in-law added. It's about my mom. Today she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. What? Alzheimer's? Your mom, seriously? Powell asked, incredulous. Yes, so about what we should do. Before I could finish, they burst into laughter. Poor thing, having Alzheimer's. I don't want to be involved with sick people, my mother-in-law sneered. Right. How weak must her brain be to get Alzheimer's at her age, Powell added. Why are you saying such things? I asked, shocked. Ignoring my confusion, they continued laughing. People who get Alzheimer's are those who don't think much in their daily lives, my mother-in-law remarked. Yeah, just like you, not thinking much. That's why you'll get Alzheimer's too, Powell said chuckling. Stop it. How can you say such cruel things? I demanded. Why not? It's the truth, right? Yeah, Mom, we're just telling the truth. This was too much. Everything went dark as their cruelty overwhelmed me. You're not thinking of taking care of your mom, are you? Powell asked, his tone suddenly serious. Well, I was hoping she could live with us, here. Are you kidding me? Why should we live with someone with Alzheimer's? Powell snapped. She's not just someone with Alzheimer's. She's still in the early stages and can take care of herself. That's not the point. We're not living with her, period. I accepted living with your mother, so why not mine? I retorted, trying to keep calm. Suddenly, Powell slammed the table and glared at me. Don't compare a healthy person like my mom to your sick mother. Got it? I will never agree to live with her. But if something happens to her, I'll regret it forever, I pleaded. I don't care about your regrets. You married into this family, so just listen to us. No matter how much I tried to persuade them, their stance remained unchanged. So I made another proposal. If we can't live together, at least let me visit her regularly. What? If you do that, we'll have to manage the housework. I'm just really worried about her. Please? No. Why not? Obviously, every time you visit her, it'll cost money and we'll have to pay for her medical bills. Our finances will suffer. It's my money. No, you're not visiting her. End of story. Far from living with my mom, I wasn't even allowed to go to her place. I was completely stuck in all directions. Even my mother-in-law, who had been listening to the conversation, added a blow. Atoria, do you even understand your position here? Mother, please, I'm really worried about her. Enough. You're part of the Brown family now. Just listen to Powell and me. But. Enough. If you keep this up, we'll divorce. How dare you defy us? Get out. Hearing the word divorce from her, my husband joined in, barely holding back his laughter. Hey, divorce sounds good. We don't need a wife who prioritizes a sick person over her own family. Are you serious? I asked, my voice trembling with anger. You call yourself an illustrator, but you barely make anything. You're so arrogant, Powell sneered. It's a real job. Enough. Let's divorce. If you want to take care of a sick person so badly, just leave. All the anger I had been holding back exploded. I wouldn't let them mock me or my mom. They weren't my family anymore if that's how they felt. With my mind made up, I told them fine. If that's how you feel, I'll leave. For a moment, they looked shocked, but then they smirked. Good. Do what you want. Just leave quickly. I never thought you would leave on your own. I'm so happy, my mother-in-law said, grinning. I'll pack my things and go back to my mom's house. Send the divorce papers by mail. Sure thing. I'll get them from the courthouse tomorrow and send them right over. This is perfect. Just my lovely son and me living together. I'll go pack my things now. Hurry up. We're having a party with mom tonight. Powell exclaimed. Sounds great. Let's go out for steak. My mother-in-law chimed in. This family was done. Watching them celebrate, I quickly started packing. Sitting with the two of them smiling broadly, I left that house behind. A few days later, I received the divorce papers from Powell, which I promptly signed and submitted. When I told my mom, she looked apologetic. I'm so sorry, Atoria. This is all because of me. Don't be silly. I feel so much better without those terrible people as family. When you first mentioned living together, I was actually worried about your mother-in-law. She's a bit off, right? I should have stopped the construction of the new house more firmly. 
I'm truly sorry. Don't apologize. I'm happy now, living here with you. Atoria, thank you so much. So was that matter all settled? Yes, it's all good. I'm already on it. I showed her the documents and my mom smirked mischievously. That's right. I won't let it end with just a divorce. My revenge is just beginning. Two weeks later, just as I expected, I received a frantic call from my ex-husband. Hey, what the hell are you thinking? What do you mean? I asked, playing innocent. You know exactly what I mean. I got the house sale documents. You sent them, didn't you? Yes, I did. It's all written there. Any problems? Don't play games with me, selling our house. I'll never allow it. The first thing I did after divorcing my husband was sell the house we lived in with his mother. He seemed to have forgotten about the time we built the house and now he was angry and feeling betrayed. Why can't you sell that house? It's ours. Ours? Really? It's marital property. We're divorced, so we need to split the assets fairly. His absurd claim made me burst into laughter. Are you kidding? Split assets? Don't make me laugh. What's so funny? He demanded. Do you even realize why we were always short on money? That's because you never earned enough. I have savings, he protested. You're wrong. I had to give money to your mother almost every day. That's why my savings are almost gone. If we were to split assets, I'd just take half of your savings. You're joking, right? His voice faltered, as if he hadn't realized that my savings were nearly depleted. Still, he persisted. But we have the house. Our house. I told you I'm selling it. You can't decide that on your own. My mom and I live there. If you insist on selling, give me half the sale price. Remember when we bought the house? My mom paid for it in full because we couldn't get a loan. Did she? He asked, sounding unsure. Yes. At that time, I wasn't earning much, and you had just changed jobs with a low salary. My mom paid for the whole thing. I recently checked the property deed with her. The house is in her name. Oh, he trailed off, realization dawning on him. I remember now. I left everything to you. I thought so. But now you understand, right? We don't have the right to decide whether to sell the house. It's up to my mom, and she's on my side. Got it. Damn it, he muttered, finally realizing his position. His tone shifted to one of desperation. Please wait. What will happen to my mom and me without this house? I don't care. We filed for divorce, so we're strangers now. I owe you nothing. Don't say that. I apologize for everything. Just leave the house, please. So what's your plan? Buy the house in full from my mom? I asked, knowing it was impossible. Don't joke, that's impossible, he snapped, revealing his frustration. You heartless woman. His true feelings slipped out, and I seized the moment. Now you're asking for help? Do you think I'll forget all the times you and your mother belittled me? You think we can just pretend it never happened? You brought this on yourself. Please wait, I'm begging you, he pleaded. But it was too late. I'm genuinely relieved to cut ties with you and your terrible mother. From now on, it's just me and my mom. I couldn't care less about what happens to you too. I hope you both sink to the lowest depths together. I hung up the phone without waiting for a response and blocked his number. And just like that, I was finally free from them. Later on, I heard they moved out of the house and started living in a cramped apartment. With his meager salary and his mother, who had only ever been a housewife, their downfall was easy to imagine. Now, his mother apparently works a hectic part-time job at a supermarket. On the other hand, my mom and I are living peacefully. Thankfully, her Alzheimer's is still in the early stages, but I know it's going to get tougher in the future. That's why I want to spend as much time as possible with my mom, my only family. I've made a promise to myself to cherish every moment I have left with her.